really looking at timing here and uh, the timing of landfall looks to be uh, um, in or, let's see it happening sooner. So how about that? Uh, we were looking at it somewhere around midnight and it was pushing the last time that we spoke looking at about the 5 a.m. update. It would be somewhere between midnight, and maybe 2 a.m. And now it's looking like it will be before midnight. Uh, some models are bringing it as close to maybe 8 to 10 p.m. And uh, now I think the National Hur Hurricane Center is somewhere around 10 p.m. to midnight. So bottom line is expected to happen a little earlier. In short, though, right now we should all be in place and prepared for what we've been talking about for days. We're starting to see the weather really start to deteriorate. You can see a long Clearwater Beach. This is the Hyatt Clearwater camera. It's certainly starting to shake quite a bit. The winds are picking up. The rain is picking up. You can see the waters in the Gulf are starting to get a little bit rougher. Still not dangerous at this point, but the weather is declining enough that you don't really have a lot of time to get very far before it starts to get dangerous. So again, you want to make sure that if you are sheltering in place that you have got your supplies and you are all set and ready to weather this out. And it is going to be a longer duration, well, about a 10 to 12 hours before we start to see a significant improvement in the weather. So. Again, uh, from here on out, this is what we're uh, seeing. We've got moderate rainfall moving closer to the coastline, light to moderate rainfall here in those lighter green tones. So that's just starting to work into our inland counties. But the coastal areas have certainly been seeing some rainfall for quite some time this morning, and it's just going to start getting heavier. It's this band right here, this outer band, that we will be watching very closely. As this moves on shore, this provides a potential, provides, it sounds like it's a positive thing. It's not. So again, this creates a enhanced risk of tornadoes. So uh, as that encounters the land surface, it's friction. The land surface is friction, right? So it creates a potential for spin and that's where we get a chance for some weak tornadoes. We have had in the outer bands those little cells creating a few tornado warnings and that is where you're seeing the red boxes here around Lake Okeechobee into the southwest of Lake Okeechobee. This is a much larger band and again with that embedded in it we will have smaller cells and they can start to spin. If the, that spin reaches the ground then of course we've got a tornado. Uh, with Helene we didn't see a lot of that activity but again it, every storm is different. Every storm sets up a little differently and although we have that risk again as we continue through the storm. We'll see sometimes you'll get uh, quite a few that pop up within a brief period of time. Sometimes they end up just being funnel clouds and never end up reaching the surface, but usually they are brief and they are rather weak. So if this is new to you, uh, don't be thinking what you see out in the Midwest as big, you know, storm or big tornadoes that are going to be tracking long distances because that's not what you typically will see with uh, them embedded in side of a hurricane. Okay, so as we're looking at the storm right now, you can see how we've got those outer bands and those will have very heavy uh, rainfall along with them. Every once in a while, you'll hear a little thunder or uh, see some lightning, but usually not a lot of that. And then we've got the heaviest rainfall still on the north side of the system. This computer model is showing that landfall is going to be closer to about eight o'clock. So this is again a faster model than what the National Hurricane Center is uh, showing for landfall. So that's where we've got that discrepancy in timing. The storm has sped up. So the 11 o'clock update uh, brought us from about, what was it, 14 mile per hour forward speed at five o'clock this morning, and now it's up to 17. So it is increasing in forward speed. It's weakening. It's doing all the things that we expected it to do. And uh, so that's all great news. All the impacts are remaining the same. The heaviest rainfall on the north side of the system some minor changes about the impacts, but again, nothing that would be unexpected if you've been treating this whole area as an area of landfall. Uh, so again, we're looking at where the center of the storm starts to broaden along uh, as it weakens and as it moves on shore and then it really starts to fall apart by tomorrow morning and this is where things start to improve dramatically our winds start to really come down around 11 o'clock tomorrow morning so 
That's why I said around 10, 12 hours, and then we'll see some real improvement or at least a return to about what we're experiencing at the moment with less rainfall. So the current wind gusts, uh, this is what we're seeing at the moment. We've got 25 mile per hour wind gusts around Haines City and into Zephyr Hills. We have 28 mile per hour wind gusts in Tampa, and we're up to 44 around St. Pete. We do expect to see the highest wind gusts around uh, the coastline. So again, this is completely expected that we would see this kind of range in the winds at this point. And what we're going to continue to see is that the speeds increase. So by about four o'clock, we're getting into that 40 to 50 mile per hour range. This is when we're likely to have the skyway closed at that point. And then from that point forward, we're getting into those tropical storm force gusts where and likely to see some tropical uh, storm force sustained winds across the coastal areas with the gusts in that 50 to 60 uh, mile per hour range. And if the timing of landfall ends up in that 8 to 10 o'clock time frame. We'll be seeing some of the stronger winds gusts around the 80 to 90 mile per hour range at that point. And one of the things that we are finding that's interesting is that the way that this storm starts to weaken is that the wind starts to shift a little more forward instead of just being on the right side of the storm, which typically is the way it sets up. This time, the way the storm is falling apart, it starts to spread those winds a little farther to the face of the of the eye wall as well as to the northeast side. And that's why you're seeing these 69 mile per hour wind gusts here in Brooksville as well as to the south seeing the very strong winds. Still a little bit stronger though around Sarasota than what you're seeing to the north, but Usually you wouldn't see quite as strong on the north side as what we are seeing with this storm. So we'll see again. This is a model. This is not a guarantee. We'll see if this all comes to, you know, to uh, uh, if it all verifies. There's the word I was looking for. But again, this is a model, so we'll see if it verifies. But at this point, this is showing a little bit of a difference from what we would typically find in a hurricane. Still within range of what we were talking about expecting and that we all should be expecting as this storm moves through, but um, just a little misplaced on the center or the morph storm morphology, the storm makeup. But uh, as it continues to move inland, it will continue to weaken and then it moves off shore and conditions start to improve and, and uh, we will see much nicer weather again after that storm moves off into the Atlantic as expected. So right now we've got 145 mile per hour maximum sustained winds. It is moving to the northeast at 17 miles per hour. The pressure is increasing. So all of this means that the storm is speeding up and it's weakening and it's making its way in the direction of uh, the west coast here of Florida. So uh, as it's making its approach, it'll continue to weaken likely to around that 125 mile per hour range that we had been watching all week. So that uh, little pickup this morning where, you know, for a brief moment, it made your heart skip when you saw that big number four right next to the coastline. It's back down to three. Again, it was only a five mile per hour difference when you really look at the difference. So it just keeps us, you know, keeps us jumping. That's what this storm has been doing. But again, all of the numbers of the impacts really are remaining the same. A little bit of a shift here with the numbers getting highest. We're now, as we're focusing in that cone of uncertainty and just bringing that in a little bit tighter, and now around Tampa Bay, so Pinellas County on through Southern Manatee County, it looks like we're more in the eight to 12 in, uh, foot range for a uh, potential storm surge. And one of the things I wanna let you know about timing, I'll have more on this in just a minute when I can pull it, when I can get the graphics all loaded. But I was looking at the timing of the peak in our storm surge, and it looks like it's going to be tomorrow morning. If some of the models that were really accurate in Helene are as accurate this time as they were before. And clearly they did a fabulous job in, in the timing of the peak for Helene. If they are as good this time as they were last time, our peak will be tomorrow morning. Again, that's not really supporting what we typically think of when we're thinking about the hurricane approaching and creating that storm surge in advance of its approach. So a lot of times what we're talking about with storm surge is how that storm pushes the water against the coastline and then the water has nowhere to go, so it moves inland. 
but the tide is also a factor. And right now we are, let's see, we're at low tide. So our next high tide is coming in at uh, just after midnight or into tomorrow morning. And that is when, I may be getting myself a little mixed up on the timing. Again, I'm gonna give you more detail on it in a moment, but the bottom line is that tomorrow morning is when we are reaching a high tide. Even though the storm may be inland and past us, we may end up with our highest amount of surge at that point. So again, we'll get back to that, but the bottom line is these are the numbers we should be keeping in mind, more on the timing and just a little bit, but again, those haven't changed. They've just kind of come together a little bit better. So peak storm surge early Thursday morning is what we're looking at at this point. Tornado threat is through tonight. Right now, the uh, tornado watch is in effect until I believe it's nine o'clock tonight, but that could get extended. And the highest winds are expected from eight o'clock tonight until about eight o'clock tomorrow morning. So that it is a pretty long duration. And the skyway is now closed. So the winds have reached levels uh, that uh, create yeah, 45 or over, 45 miles per hour or over. And uh, so the Skyway Bridge has closed, so there certainly are risks to being outside now and driving, and you definitely want to stay off the roads. The accumulating rain will be tapering off tomorrow, so we do have that threat of freshwater flooding in addition to the threat of the storm surge flooding. Again, most of our areas are going to be getting somewhere in that four inch range, which isn't terrible, but there will be an area along, especially the north side of where the center comes on shore that could be seeing somewhere in that 12 to 14 inch range or even greater in some localized areas. And that certainly is enough to create some significant flooding. And this is the way it's looking right now, or at least this model's projection of those rainfall totals. So again, the farther south you go, which is closer to where landfall is more likely, the numbers are getting bigger, and then it just spreads out north from there. Uh, but these are still significant. We don't want to see in Pasco County around areas that we have seen significant flooding with summer thunderstorms to see rainfall totals of six inches. And uh, again, this model showing that we may be seeing somewhere around seven to 10 with some locally higher amounts in northern uh, Pinellas County, as well as northwestern Hillsborough. County. Again, we've had flooded areas here that haven't received this much rainfall. We've already got very saturated ground, so this is a real concern. And uh, again, you want to be in place. Make sure that you're not wandering around. Going out in flooded areas is not a good idea. You don't know what's in the water, so you want to uh, definitely stay indoors until those storms pass about 11 o'clock around this time tomorrow, we'll start to have uh, you know, a better assessment of what's going on. And, uh, and of course, we'll be bringing that all to you.